Hola, ¿cómo están? Um, my name is Rach, uh, Rachel Newsham. I was born in Preston, in the northwest of England, just a few years ago. And I moved to New Zealand and I live in Auckland since 2004, which is, I think, 18 years now. Um, the reason I came here is because I applied for this job to work for Les Mills International as a program director for Body Combat. And I'd share that job with Dan Cohen. And we've done that now since 2004. Um, my journey with Body Combat started back in the UK where I attended a Body Combat Masterclass with Dan and was inspired to become part of the Body Combat family, or as we say here in Aotearoa, Fano the body combat Fano and the rest is history is history is history we are the new legends this is the new age we are the new legends the new legends we are the chosen ones when and why did i travel to new zealand so my first journey to New Zealand was the longest flight in the world <laughs> because it is the bottom of the world oh my goodness um, I flew in April 2004 we arrived on the 1st of April and it wasn't a joke we actually had been given the job which was exciting because <laughs> I thought oh maybe this is a joke could this really be happening um, and that was to take up the role as program director or co-program director with Dan Cohen for Les Mills Body Combat. How did I find out about Les Mills? So my first introduction to Les Mills was when I was working as a gym instructor for a health club in the northwest of England called Sport 2000 at a holiday village called Ribby Hall Holiday Village. And the club manager, Mark Parsington, had been approached by Les Mills in the UK with Body Pump as a proposition. Would you like to run a body pump training module in your club and take on the license? And he spoke to myself and myself and three other colleagues decided, yes, let's do the training. So we hosted the training. We hosted a body pump training. My trainer was a lovely, incredibly smart, athletic, beautiful woman, Jenny Jolliffe, and she inspired me to become a Les Mills instructor. Oh, who was my mentor or who discovered me? <laughs> okay, so I don't know who discovered me. Honestly, I think I could, I could say, I could be grateful to so many people that gave me the opportunity because honestly, my journey in, in group fitness had to come from an introduction to the fitness industry. And if I dial it right back to the beginning, my first job in the fitness industry, I was given with no qualifications whatsoever. It was just on merit of personality. And he employed me knowing that he was gonna train me. And that was John McKillwan, who the name probably doesn't mean anything to anybody in the Les Mills world because he doesn't do group fitness. But he interviewed me for my first job as a gym instructor to work for Mark Partington and Sport 2000. And after I got my job as a gym instructor, there's a lot of other information, but my introduction to boot camp in the UK or my recommendation came from a lady called Dawn, Dawn McLean and she was an assessor for Les Mills in the UK and she put me forward and said you have, I don't want to say it because it sounds so egotistical but she said some lovely things about me and what I can offer people and she said you should do more than this, you should do more than teach my Wednesday night class at Westview Leisure Centre, you should go. So I applied for boot camp and she encouraged me and gave me the confidence to apply. So thanks to Dawn. And then of course there was Dan. Dan was a huge inspiration to me. And in the world of martial arts, he probably, no, definitely was my first inspiration to want to punch and kick um, and look at the results of that inspiration. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what did I dream of being when I grew up? 
This is interesting because as a little kid, like the gym wasn't even a thing. You know, there was no, my parents didn't go to the gym. You know, there was no um, workout at home. <laughs> so I didn't even know it was a thing. But there was a lot of football in my family. And when I say football, I'm talking about the one that you kick. Some people call it soccer. Um, my second cousin is a professional footballer. My dad was a footballer. My brother was a footballer, not professionally amateur, but it played a big part in our family life. So I found a lot of fascination in football and would have loved to have been part of a team playing football. So maybe a footballer. Um, if not that, then I wanted to definitely be a teacher. I just didn't know what, maybe a PE teacher. My PE teachers were amazing. Um, Paula and Mrs. Smith, and they were amazing influences on me. And yeah, I don't know. Like I always thought that I would do something that felt fun. And it's funny because when I did my GCSE PE, which is the, the exam you take as a school student at 16, General Certificate of Secondary Education, my PE study <laughs> was taking year seven students through a, a cardiovascular study to see if step aerobics improved the cardiovascular system, <laughs> which obviously it does, but I did it. And I was teaching year seven students step when I was year 11 and I had no idea that I'd be doing this now. What are my five favorite tracks? Woo! I really can't even answer that. I, I, I really can't because all of my, all of my tracks, all of my releases are my favorites. It's like picking a favorite child. You feel like you're leaving the others out, you know? So I would just answer with my favorite release recently, which is easier to remember because there's a lot of releases now, would be Body Combat 80. And that's because Dan and I taught on the top of a mountain in the bottom of the South Island, which was amazing. You know, I didn't think this kid from Preston would end up teaching at the top of the mountain. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, there are lots of different things you can do to improve your body combat skills um, that complement body combat outside of the group fitness studio. Definitely um, have some personal training with some pad work where you actually make contact. Because the minute you feel the end of the move, something clicks and you understand the mechanics behind the movement in a different way. Is it necessary? No, it's not necessary. But if someone wanted to complement their body combat with something, it works beautifully. Okay, several. Uh, one of the, the first global summit we did in, in New Zealand, in Auckland, that was amazing. That was Body Combat 36. It is time to unleash your inner warrior with Body Combat. Join with Oscar from Spain Tamu from Japan, Thomas from France, Hernan from Argentina, and leading from New Zealand, Dan and Rach. Uh, that was in 2008, February, February 2008, where the world came to New Zealand for a global summit. And we talked with some of my nearest and dearest body combat friends. Um, Oscar, Thomas, Hernan, Dan, myself. Uh, yeah, that was pretty special. And looking out on the floor at all of these incredible faces like Andreas and Benjamin Ciolo, um, lots of faces that are still a big part of the Les Mills community. That was a pretty cool moment. Where, do you, where should I start? I could write a book. Maybe I should. Tell me if I should write a book. Um, it's true, there, there is a lot of demand on a group fitness instructor to have the confidence to stand in front of a, a group of people and feel uh, connected to themselves 
in a way that they feel like they have the knowledge to share and they feel safe enough to share that knowledge without being judged. Because it is a judgy area. My tip would be, if you're gonna do this job, keep in mind that it's not about us. It's about the experience we provide for the people in the room that, that come for whatever reason, and they'll all be different on that day. Predominantly, they want to have a positive exercise experience. And that positivity comes from a room that's judgment free in a sense that no one's perfect, right? In a sense that exercise can be fun and should be fun. Um, so if you find yourself going into your head going, oh, I'm so nervous, I'm so scared. Can I do this? Should I do this? Turn it away from you and make it about the room because we are all in service of each other. And in this moment, you're providing a service that people are really looking for. So if you keep the focus on the room, stay professional, do the mahi, which is how we say work, and have patience and have confidence in the future is bright. Okay, what do I know about Latin America? I know I've flown through there so many times. Um, yeah, I have flown through Latin America, but I've only visited Brazil uh, and taken steps outside of the airport. So I don't know anything outside of that particular part. However, I don't need to go to those countries because I am the most fortunate when people from Latin America come and visit me here in my classes in New Zealand. And I definitely have Felipe and Joe and a bunch of great people that have arrived and stayed. Uh, I know that they are amongst the friendliest, kindest, enthusiastic, passionate, fit, woo, the fitness, uh, the commitment, the joy for life, the celebration of friend, family, fun, fitness. That's the kind um, I would love to go to Chile. I would love to meet the people. I'd love to practice my Spanish over there. Um, I, <laughs> I do try to throw a few Spanish words into my classes. Um, yeah, so I don't know so much, but I know what I know from the representation of the people that have visited me here in New Zealand. Um, what kind of fun story could I share with you? Okay, there was this one time really early on in body combat where I don't think I'd been living in New Zealand very long. And so I didn't have much of a support system here because I basically lived here, but I traveled around the world and I got quite sick. It was winter. I got a really bad cough, a really bad cold and filming week back then was a whole week. I got through filming week and on filming day, we were set to start filming at 7 a.m., which meant we needed to be in hair and makeup and wardrobe at 5 a.m. Now, I don't really like the early morning start, and I certainly didn't in my early 20s. So, I, the night before filming, I didn't sleep. I was so sick. You know when you lie down, you have a coffee, you can't breathe? So I was so sick, and my alarm went, but I didn't wake up. I slept through my alarm and I got, I woke up 15 minutes before we were supposed to be on stage and my heart like panicked and I like <gasps> panic and I jumped in the car. Fortunately, it was a Sunday, so there was no traffic on the road and I drove all the way up to the door of the club where you're not supposed to. I jumped out. My hair was already braided because I did it two days ago and I looked like a zombie, like I was, not even awake, like lines on my face from sleep. And I got on stage and I started the warm up like this with my hands. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, these people have been waiting for me. It's now quarter past and I'm 15 minutes late. And the music starts, Dan's teaching the upper body warm up. And we start to shuffle to the side and we do some punches. We shuffle back, we do some more punches. And in my head, I'm thinking, I don't recognize the music. I don't recognize the mood. This is not what we've just done for a week. Is this a nightmare? Am I even awake? What is happening? Ah! And then 30 seconds of this in my brain. And then Dan said, stop, stop. That's not body combat, whatever number. That's last time. 
So the DJ was playing the music of the wrong day. And I literally went, ah. Oh, so, oh my goodness. So that was a fun story that um, I will never forget. What am I passionate about outside of body combat? Currently, what I'm really passionate about is human behavior that shows empathy, understand kindness. That's what I'm really passionate about because I feel like it's, it's dissolving around us because we're experiencing a really hard period of time in the world, not in the country, but in the world. Everybody is experiencing a huge degree of hardship and it's harder to show empathy and kindness when you're scared and you're fearful. So I'm really passionate about witnessing and supporting and encouraging that kind of behavior. Can I do it all the time? Can I embody empathy, passion, support, kindness? Not 100% of my time. I'm gonna have human moments where I feel scared and, I, and I'm fearful and I'm afraid. But that doesn't mean that I, I'm not aware of that and that I can choose an alternative viewpoint because we need more of that love, we need more of that joy, we need more of those opportunities, like my class this morning, where we can escape the media, the news, the concern, the worry, the pressure, and we can celebrate health and company and community. So I'm really passionate about that. <laughs> um, okay, so for anybody that knows me, in a personal friendship, they'll tell you that I am a super deep, thoughtful soul. So in, in my spare time, I have a lot of um, philosophical conversations with people. I love to look at the depth of life. So I may appear to be just in this world of health and fitness where I have fun teaching you a workout, dropping a few motivational words, but I, I love to live in the depth of humanity and, and try and understand why we behave the way we behave in a way, because I'm curious about it. So in my, in my spare time at the moment, I'm studying. I'm studying a postgraduate um, course in psychology. I wanna learn about the brain. Uh, so that's taking up a lot of my free time, but when I'm not doing that, I love to go and eat Italian food, drink red wine, hugely, hugely passionate about good chocolate. Uh, please don't send me any though, because I can't wear all the chocolate. <laughs> um, and the wine. Um, I love rugby. I've really grown fond of the, the national sport, of one of the national sports of New Zealand rugby, even though I wasn't born and raised here. I love watching rugby and supporting the national teams. Um, reading. I love to watch some TV shows particularly one in England that reminds me of home. It's called Coronation Street. You won't know it, but I, my people in the UK do. Um, and hanging out with people, yeah. So that's just a few things. What advice could I give to future generations? This is where I go deep. Woo! We, we feel, I feel like as a young person, I had very little understanding about the privileged life I was living because I was protected from misery and sorrow. I was a child and as I became an adult, I understood suffering in the world outside of the bubble that I was raised in. And then I experienced my own suffering and that gave me a sense of understanding beyond myself. Um, and it's easy to become lost in that in that sense of, oh dear, what's gonna happen next? The world is blah. And if you're in the next generation wondering what's gonna happen, you can have two choices. You can be curious or you can be anxious. And the most positive thing I've found is to be curious. I'm curious about what comes next and I'm not afraid about what comes next because I, I behave as a better human when I'm curious. When I'm anxious, my behavior isn't helpful. So it's a privilege to be human. It's something that we're not promised. Time is not something that we're promised. So 
if you have the opportunity to celebrate your time or somebody else's time, go ahead and do it. When you're given the choice to behave in a constructive way, and a helpful way that will help improve the lives of others, choose it. Even if it feels like you may lose something, you may lose something in this life, but I think you gain it in the next life because you're paying it forward to the next generation. So, whoa, there's the depth of Newsham. <laughs>